November 25th, 1999, just 37 days before a new millennium and a certain someone would be born in his hometown and would be doing this type of content 22 years later after he was born. But before we say hello to the 21st century, we got one more parade to cover as we got a span of 23 songs. Some familiar faces returning, some that would be an A-list celebrity in the future, and some of the songs would be considered a 90s classic. Not only were celebrating Thanksgiving, but counting down to the year 2000 with the last Thanksgiving party of the 20th century. This is my ranking of the songs from the 1999 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Number 23. Headed for the Future by America Sings. Here we go again. The Disney Park singers singing again, and it has become weaker and weaker in their vocals. But I'm not going into that again. As the first pre-parade act of the year, they begin with the performance of a song to say goodbye to 1999 and say hello to 2000 with Headed for the Future. You will see a couple of songs on this list that are more of the celebration of the new millennium, and this song sucks. I mean, unlike some of the other songs, what's the message of this song for 2000? I don't get it. I feel like I'm not an America Sings fan at all. Please start getting good, or the next ones are going to be on the bottom of these lists. No offense to those who performed that year in the past or beyond, by the way. Number 22... Just Beyond the Dream by Lilius White featuring the United States Naval Academy Glee Club. Well known as a human cast member on Sesame Street in the early 90s, Calliope in Disney's Hercules and on Broadway, most notably the 1995 revival of How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, which she did perform in that year's parade with Matthew Broadwick. Lilius White is joined by the United States Naval Academy Glee Club to premiere the theme song for Macy's 4th of July Fireworks 2000, Just Beyond the Dream. I will say it's not a bad song. I feel more mixed with it. I just didn't have the passion for a build up for a countdown for a fireworks show, even if we just passed the 4th of July a couple of weeks ago. Now, I'm going to be honest here, as much as I am a Macy's Parade fan, I don't watch their 4th of July fireworks show on television. I'm more of a fan of their Thanksgiving celebration, and besides, I can see fireworks around me where I live. Now, you might remember one of the rules I've said that the song's availability in today's standard of digital music is either you can get it on iTunes or Apple or Spotify. Well, now add SoundCloud to these rules, because I forgot about that premium platform. And surprisingly enough, some of the parade songs that were written by William Skimmerhorn is actually available on his page on SoundCloud, including some of the songs that you will be seeing in future rankings. And this year, with Just Beyond the Dream, he used this song for a musical called Beyond the Dream, and instead of Lilius White in the parade, it was Roger Bart, who will, you will be seeing in the 2002 ranking, and Norm Lewis. I don't know which version is better, but regardless, a forgettable 4th of July song for me. Number 21, Our Children by the cast of Broadway's Ragtime. The Tony Award-winning musical brings its cast in the parade on the Continental Airlines float as they perform Our Children. In the musical, it's more about the friendship of a, of a mother and a guy named Tate during the dawn of the 20th century as her son and his daughter becomes great friends and talk about how much their children is so important to them and says how it reveals more about who he is. In the parade, they brought a special rendition as the entire cast joins in and it is way better than the one in the soundtrack. The song itself is also very mixed with me. The calmness is great, but the lyrics don't have that connection to me. Not because I'm not a father, it's just the setting would probably be the reason. So I do prefer listening to it in the parade, but in the style of the show, I do have to pass. Number 20, Bye Bye Blackbird by the cast of Broadway's Fosse. Another Tony Award winning musical, this one has three acts, and it doesn't really have a structured narrative for the show, 
as is more of an homage to the work of Bob Fosse for his choreography and the tone of the songs on stage, TV, music, film, basically all four major forms of entertainment. The song that was chosen was 1926's Bye Bye Blackbird in the form of the concert TV movie Liza with a Z starring Liza Minnelli. Now there is a major difference if you listen to the song not by the TV movie, but the soundtrack of the musical and the parade performance. This is a good song, and the album just really has that Fosse tone if you listen to any of his musicals. So why is this low? And that is the parade performance. The choreography is good, but the tone of the music and the vocals is very upbeat. Now I know that the original singer Valerie Pettiford, if that's correct, I'm sorry if I butchered that, had already left the show. So her, her replacement at the time was Stephanie Pope. Also, I don't blame her on what she was wearing, but the costume is a bit inappropriate for a general audience, because I think this musical was not for kids. Good song, but the performance on television trying to be so catchy is not what Bob Fosse would have wanted. Number 19, How Do You Do by the cast of Sesame Street. Yep, the Sesame Street gang did not make it into the top 10 this year. Well, how can I put this... Yes, I know Grover would not like this song being low on this list as this is one of his songs. But when it comes to the parade, it's one of their weaker performances. Kind of a fast-paced performance of the song. Not to mention, you would think they would perform a song from the movie The Adventures of Almo and Grouchland, since that movie was already out a month before, but they didn't. There are some memorable performances, but this is in the bottom tier for Sesame Street in terms of the Macy's Parade. Number 18, Just Wave Hello by Charlotte Church. In her second self-titled album, this 13-year-old soprano from Wales performs a song that would be a centerpiece for the new millennium, for the parade, and even for Ford by all means. Yes, the car motor company. As the last days are coming, Macy's Parade Studio made a time continuum float for this one-time occasion for the celebration of the last parade of the century, and having her presence is a perfect choice for the float. Of course, at the time, her voice is incredible when she was 13, and the song that was used brings a message not just for America, but the whole world. As this day and night cycle we go through, and wave hello to everyone. Now, with this being low on the list, is not because I'm mixed with it, it's not that memorable for me. Spe specifically, this would be a song I would not listen to every day, only when I'm relaxing or something. And the parade performance, it's fine, and I can see how Charlotte really took to this performance. Maybe whenever the world would go to the year 2999, those people would once again to wave hello. Number 17, Marshmallow World by the Radio City Rockettes. Yes, there was a year when the ever-famous Rockettes actually sang in the parade. Ever since 1957 or 58, depending on which site you visit, the Radio City Rockettes would be a yearly performance and usually the last pre-parade act in recent years. Every year, they usually perform a number for their ever-famous show, the Radio City Christmas Spectacular, and for 1999, a new number, which is Marshmallow World, and yes, that classic Christmas song, was used, as they appear as holiday window store mannequins that comes to life. Of course, the precision dance usually has to be accurate when it comes to the choreography, and they know how to work together to make sure there is no screw-ups to match with the orchestral music. But the most shocking thing, when I saw this performance for the first time, it's when they started to sing Marshmallow World, using ukuleles as their instruments. And I will admit, they do a good job singing their vocal parts for the number, and I don't know if there were other acts from the show they sang. Let me know in the comments. Since it's more about the dancing and the singing part of the song, and since this is the only time I can think of that the Rockheads actually sing in the Macy's Parade, it cannot go higher on my list. Number 16. Another opening, another show, by the cast of Broadway's Kiss Me Kate. When the 1948 musical got its first revival in 1999, which opened a week before Thanksgiving and would win the Tony for a revival of a musical months later, they bring us the opening act about show business 
with another opening, another show, as the ensemble, led by Adrian Lennox, gets ready for the final rehearsal of a musical version of William Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew before opening it later that evening. Now, when you listen to the album, there are some massive gaps between the lyrics when you hear a lot of the orchestra parts. That's because when you see the show or its performance in the parade, a lot of dialogue and the choreography was added. I prefer the one in the parade because it's odd in the album without the dialogue. The song itself is not really a standout, but it has a better parade impact. And like Annie Get Your Gun in the previous year, the cast of Kiss Me Kate welcomed the last parade of the century to Herald Square, with the last section of the lyrics being used. Based on the two, I say Annie Get Your Gun had the better welcome, based on the tone and the choreography. Number 15. Swing, brother, swing, sing, 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 and it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing by the cast of Broadway Swing featuring Anne Hampton Calloway. Now this performance is not a medley that the parade has done. This is in the soundtrack as the last three songs come together for one big finale. As you can tell, this musical uses songs from the swing era of jazz music from the 1930s up to 1946. Like the Rockettes, this performance combines both the dancing and the singers, which one of them is Anne Hampton Calloway, to bring this great performance to the parade, especially the singers starting to sing in the tones of these eras like boom, 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 now, which one of these three songs is the best? Well, I can't tell, because I'm only judging by the finale here. The choreography is well done here, but like Just Wave Hello, this is a song I wouldn't listen to often. Yes, for the tone of dancing, but also to show people this era of jazz music. If you want to know more about the swing era, just listen to the soundtrack of this musical. Number 14, Night Fever by the cast of Broadway's Saturday Night Fever. Adapting the 1977 film of the same name, Saturday Night Fever comes to Broadway with the majority of the soundtrack came to the musical with some of the songs by the Bee Gees. And the song they chose for the parade was Night Fever. And whoa! I haven't listened to the original version, but what a catchy Bee Gees song to be used for a musical number. Since the setting is supposed to set around the disco era, and I know for the soundtrack it's more on the West End audio for that, but it is the same musical number, but different actors. For the parade performance, with the Broadway cast with James Capranello, if Fosse's performance was a beat, Saturday Night Fever's performance went a downbeat. Now we cannot tell if this tone was in the Broadway version, since we never got a Broadway soundtrack of the musical, so this is the closest thing we got. But the choreography is great, that you want to get on the dancing stage or disco stage if we go by this musical if it was in a downtone and we had a Broadway version of the soundtrack and not just the West End version. Number 13. Why Do Fools Fall in Love by Miss America 2000, Heather French. During the 80s and 90s in some occasions, the woman would win Miss America for the following years would perform in the Macy's Parade. And for 1999, the winner to be Miss America 2000 is Heather French, who would later marry Kentucky's Lieutenant Governor Steve Harry. She would perform Frankie Lima and the Teenagers classic, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, as she sings half of the song, which being incomplete could be a reason why it's not that high on my list. But she does do a good job singing, especially at the beginning. So despite of being incomplete, it does get a chance to be almost at the center of this list. Number 12, 25 Days of Christmas by Wild Orchid. Every December, Fox Family, later than ABC Family, and now Freeform air Christmas specials and movies for 25 days and edit off on Christmas Day. Which, that was the thing I did every year as a child. But unfortunately, they usually air the same things every year and nothing new comes into play. Back in 1999, the host of the game show Great Pretenders, girl group Wild Orchid, performed the title song of the holiday program, 25 Days of Christmas. Now, I couldn't find this song in any of the promos or commercials from that year that are on YouTube, but this is a pretty good holiday song, 
and the young ladies did a good job performing it and almost matching their outfits with colors. By the way, the one in the blue would end up having a solo career and become a member of the Black Eyed Peas. Her name is Stacy Ferguson, aka Fergie. Yeah, they managed to get Fergie before she became popular herself. Regardless, this song makes you want to switch to that channel to see what they have. But I wish there was more specials or movies that the program can have nowadays. Number 11. Moments of You by Rockapella. Unlike the last episode where they perform a song that you can't find and end up being at the bottom of the list, you got a song that you can actually find as they would perform in the parade with their first song from their album, Don't Tell Me You Do, with Moments of You. And this is way better than Wake Up, but it's not on the level of their head where in the world is Carmen San Diego. At least I'm officially judging here, and it's great. For the parade performance, the audio is a bit different as they go way too fast with the performance, so much so that the Folgers coffee flow does not stop. I wonder why. If it wasn't for the tone of the parade, it would have been higher. Number 10. Celebration by Cool and the Game. This is a song that you would hear for every New Year's party, and it's Cool in the Gang's 1980 classic from their album, Celebrate. Now, they did do a little bit of the performance of it back in 1981 with other songs as a medley, but this time for 1999, they just performed Celebration on its own. And how can you not deny that this is a great song to listen to, especially during the end of the century? Whatever party you celebrate, this song has to come in as well. It's understandable that the vocals have to be different because we're talking about a song that was 19 years old when it first came out. I still prefer the main rendition compared to the 99's parade performance, although I do like the moment when you hear if I'm correct in the odd tune, Millennium Celebration. And that's a cool for the timing of that year. This makes sense to be in the top five, but judging the parade performance, they should have continued when the float was moving on the part with the instruments playing. Number 9, Crocodile Rock by Germany Kushner. Animal Planet joins the Macy's Parade for the very first time, and their float features a giant crocodile with Terry Irwin on top. And with the crocodile being the centerpiece of the float, what song would start off Animal Planet's years in the Macy's Parade with the ever-famous Elton John song, Crocodile Rock? And taking the stage is Germany Kushner who was in last year's parade with the cast of Broadway's Footloose and now doing this cover as a parade exclusive. Being a minute and 23 seconds, it does give you a good upbeat cover of the song, although I feel mixed with the la 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 Even if it feels fast-paced, it is a good cover in the style of the original version by Elton John. And this would not be the first time you, we will hear this song on this float, specifically. Number 8, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Florence Henderson. Everyone's favorite TV mom Florence Henderson had appeared in the parade as a performer and a co-host back in 1984, and from 99 to 2000, she was a co-host on NBC's short-lived Later Today. And now she has become the second celeb to perform Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And she and the float would begin the Christmas section to get ready for Santa's arrival. And this would be my second favorite out of the four of the performance of this song in this float. As it is a bit more catchy comparing to the others. Unfortunately, it's just a parade exclusive since she never made any albums in her career. Since I really don't need to explain the song itself... All I'll just say is, with my rules, it can't be the best of the year, but a rendition like that is a deserved spot in the top 10. Number 7, Don't Look Back by the Bacon Brothers. Many of you know Kevin Bacon as an actor, but did you know he was a singing artist as well? Along with his brother Michael, they are the Bacon Brothers, and would perform Don't Look Back from their second album, Getting There. The song itself is really good, especially having both Kevin and Michael doing their parts of the song in the parade, and the parts when they sing together. Although there is a long instrumental part at the end, 
The parade performance was way better without the spaces. It feels like you're listening to the radio version of the song. Now that's something I want to hear. But sadly, you cannot get this on digitally. Not even on Spotify. They do have some of the songs from the album, but they don't have them all. Not even Don't Look Back. Despite of a long instrumental end and no way to get this on digitally that is not on YouTube, if you remember my rules, it is still a good song and a parade performance nonetheless. Number 6. Little Goodbyes by Shadaisy. In their debut album, The Whole Shebang, sisters Casty, Kelsey, and Kristen Osborne used the first song from their album with Little Goodbyes, which did hit the Billboard Country Hot songs. And one of the songs that is so catchy that the message is not that important, as these sisters knew what they were doing to make them a well-iconic country group when they started. Even the song was nominated for a Grammy. However, the parade performance is a bit odd because of the lyrics they used by choosing the second set instead of the first one which introduced the song, leading up to the final part of the main verse. Not to mention, it's a minute and five seconds. If they do choose the right set of lyrics and not too fast like many others, this would have been in the top five. Man, I'm judging a lot on the parade performances for this year specifically. Number five. I Want to Be Like You by Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. It's now time to party for the new year, as jazz band Big Bad Voodoo Daddy begins with their rendition of the Disney classic song, I Wanna Be Like You from the Jungle Book, from their third album, This Beautiful Life. And what a way to start with that instrumental opening for the jazz tune to begin the party, especially for New Year's Eve. And putting them in the planter's float is great, even though it's not circus themed, but it is fun. Even if they should have done better with the parade performance on the setting of the lyrics, because they should have put in the man's red fire lyrics and then do the main verse at the end. And the instrumental break is a bit long as well in the full length of the song. Regardless of some minor issues, it still makes it in the top five regardless. Number four, Mambo number five, A Little Bit Of by Lou Vega. This is a song that I think everyone knows what it is, whether at a party, on radio, or the Bill Clinton or Bob the Builder parodies, Lou Vega's Mambo Number no. 5 is a cover of Cuban musicians Paris Pardo's instrumental and jazz dance that was originally released in 1950, and this German singer would add lyrics to make this iconic rendition of the song in time for the new millennium on his debut album, A Little Bit of Mambo. And I'm judging this song on the album itself, which was the radio edit as the original length is 5 minutes and 14 seconds, this one is 3 minutes and 39 seconds. Like Crocodile Rock and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I really don't need to explain my thoughts on this song, it basically explains for itself. The parade performance, I say it's a bit of a letdown, because we don't get the second set of the lyrics, which is jump up and down and move it all around. It just goes to the final part of the song after the first set, and he missed lip syncing mumbo number five twice. Maybe they could have done it better on what parts for him to sing, but you all know mumbo number five was going to be in the top five. Number three, Christmas is our favorite time of year by the cast of Barney's Night Before Christmas. On September 28th, three months before Christmas, a new Barney special was released on home video called Barney's Night Before Christmas, where Barney, Baby Bob, BJ, and four kids have fun on Christmas Eve, and with the help of Barney's imagination, they go to the North Pole before Santa takes off and get a tour of the toy factory courtesy of Mrs. Claus. As the tour begins while riding on a large toy train, Barney and the kids see the entirety of Santa's workshop and sing Why Christmas is their favorite time of year. The song is definitely a good one, and out of all the Barney songs that was used for the parade, this is my favorite one. Despite of the cheap CGI in the special, it is a great number with the performance by the kids, Mrs. Claus, and even Bob West, aka Barney, on the song, and credit to the writer as well. As I've stated in the last episode, you don't get any of the human cast for the parade, just Barney, Baby Bop, and BJ. So is it as good to the one you listen to in the special? I would say it's on par because the entire song was performed. 
which is not usually the automatic number one spot, by the way, because of course, the rules. Since there is no way to purchase this song digitally, and none of the human cast are in the parade. If those things did happen, it might have been my number one. But this is definitely the highest place for our purple dinosaur, and probably the only time they would top over the gang at Sesame Street. Number two, this gift by 98 Degrees. In the last episode, we saw them ended up getting the bronze medal of the 90s boy band love songs between them, the Backstreet Boys, and NSYNC. Now they're back again, but this time with a Christmas album called This Christmas, and they would use their sixth song from the album, an original Christmas song called This Gift. Another romantic Christmas song, but it's way better than Because of You in the love aspect. My only critique with it, it's a bit long at 4 minutes and 8 seconds, but the parade performance does give a better impact. As the last song performance before Santa's arrival, and they bring the massive conclusion of the celebrity roster for 1999 and the last parade of the century. The lyrics they chose was great, and it's only a minute and 50 seconds that does give us a good time on why we should listen to the full version and have it in our iTunes or premium music platforms. I was deciding to put this in number three because of the four minute length, but since it has a better parade impact and you can get this song in any platforms, unlike Christmas is our favorite time of year, they now deserve a silver medal for 1999. And my number one song from the 1999 Macy's Parade is What a Girl Wants by Christina Aguilera. Unlike some of the others on this list, this song basically describes why it deserved the number one spot. Although I wouldn't consider myself a huge Christina Aguilera fan, but I do get the influence she had gotten from her debut album and many things she has done, including The Voice. Starting with her cover of the Mulan song Reflection for the end credits, that's when her career as a singer went big, especially with some of her notable hits from her album, including Come On Over Baby, All I Want Is You, her cover of All For One's I Turn To You, and of course, Genie in a Bottle. And then there's What A Girl Wants, her second big single hit that was also nominated for a Grammy and showed up on several weekly and year-end charts. As this powerful song for girls is so upbeat with great lyrics and an unforgettable parade performance, as this 18-year-old soon to be 19 is going to see where she is now. Although it could be a little bit shorter, there is no issue with the song itself, as why Christina Aguilera's What a Girl Wants is the best song of 1999. Thank you guys for watching this episode, and let me just tell you, writing this was not that easy because I had made several changes when it comes to the ranking here. Wow. That's why you have to get many drafts to do it before you make your final one. If you like this episode, you can hit that subscribe button and comment down below your personal ranking on these 23 songs. Next time, we'll be entering into the 21st century, but also say goodbye to two longtime parade legends as they plan their retirement as we go into my birth year, 2000.